Uh, welcome to the On the Water podcast. Um, I'm Dusty, your host. This podcast is sponsored by Freedom Boat Club of Northern Virginia. And we're going to be meeting one of our Nova neighbors today. So I have Chris Capel, the owner of Dizzy Pig Barbecue Company. Um, they've been making handcrafted spices for a long time now, and they're up in Manassas, Virginia. And Chris, how'd you get started with barbecue? Oh, uh, well, let me see. Barbecue, I guess originally I started grilling a long time ago on a gas grill. After I got married, <clears throat> my uh, my wife was kind of craving the charcoal cooked food that she remembered from Vietnam. And I decided to uh, purchase a big green egg charcoal cooker because yeah. so, I wanted to get into smoking. And um, But that's where all this stuff started when I bought that grill. Yeah. And I think I was looking on your website, it looks like you did barbecue competitions for, would that say 20 years? Yeah, for 20 years. We just stopped last year. We, uh, uh, 20 years was long enough. We weren't having as much fun anymore and uh, um, won 15 grand championships and went to the world 15. championships seven times. Holy and uh, I figured that was enough of an experience and just decided I'm not going to do it anymore. But yeah, the competition like started after the company after oh, we first came up with our first like, seasonings um one of the reasons we started competing was because every everybody's taught to lie to you about your food you're taught to say it's good even if you don't like it <laughs> so I, I wanted to see how our seasonings would do um in a blind judging situation where they had no idea who prepared the oh food. that makes sense because yeah. the judges don't know who cooked what yeah. right and we did well in our first competition and got hooked. Wow. So that helps. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I was poking around on your Facebook and everything. It seems like you guys have a massive fan base. Um, what? Do, why do you think you have all these customers and what's keeping them coming back to Dizzy Pig? Um, well, yeah, well, it's probably because of um, well, the quality of our product, the the balance of the flavors um <clears throat> but also i think it's 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 partially because we're a cool company like we decided at the beginning that we're gonna do the right thing all the time we're not gonna try to uh, promise more than we can you know deliver that yeah. we would just have fun and do the right thing and uh, put the customer first and um i think you know people notice that and it resonates with them um <clears throat> I mean, I would uh, I would hope that a lot of it is the quality of the product and the fact that their food tastes really good <laughs> when they use our stuff and consistently good. So. Yeah. And what sets your spices apart from like, I don't know, McCormick or one of these other big companies? Well, um, it's a true craft product. Uh, a lot of these larger companies that are making um, spice blends um, it's much easier for them to use uh, pre-ground spices so they'll buy these like spices that have already been ground that way they can just you know dump them in and mix them together um, we realized early on that uh, spices and you know some more than others um, lose their flavor pretty quickly after they're ground you know um, and so we wanted to have a craft company where we did all the grinding ourselves right before we bottled the seasoning. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like the spices are ground, they're put in the bottle and they're capped you within a few hours. Um, and that just results in a much fresher, better product. Awesome. Well, I'm um, not going to lie. I cracked one of these open earlier and it smells incredible. So that's probably got to be do that fresh grinding right? a lot of it and, and it's of course you know like a big part of it that um i think people don't totally understand is the work it takes to get these blends balanced you know so that all the flavors so no one thing stands out but they all all the ingredients have a play a part but no really one spice pops out oh so that's part of your 20 years plus experience yeah. figuring that one out um, let me speak my notes here. Oh, so this is Meet Your Nova Neighbors. So you are a Northern Virginia company. 
Uh, where's your headquarters located, or where do you? Do well, we started your... off in our basement in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. Um, we, we we our first five years as a company, I was working out of my basement and mixing all the spices there. We had the USDA come into our house to inspect it. And, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, we needed more space, and and um, my favorite place was Manassas uh, because I w- I could go away from traffic because mm-hmm. we live in Fairfax, so I could go west opposite traffic and um i like the uh the industrial properties a lot better they weren't you know like chantilly and springfield all seem so cramped and and tight with you know, not really enough parking and uh, right. we, we just really like manassas uh we're right not too far outside of like downtown manassas so we have all those uh places to eat which is wonderful because most of us are going out and getting lunch at, uh Oh, every cool. day so and your uh, headquarters building there's an actual store there where people can come and yeah yep we decided to open up a store like years ago just so we could um well, well for one to take advantage of the uh, like population base that we have around mm-hmm. here but also to share our passion for cooking um and uh, so we opened up a barbecue outdoor cooking store where we sell charcoal and wood pellets and Anything that you need to grill, all the grilling tools, um, of course our seasonings. They're all 34 of our flavors are open on the counter for people to smell and taste. Oh, and cool. I think it's a great experience that can come in. Um, pretty much all the spices we saw in the store have been around within the last couple of weeks, so it's fresh. Oh, that I like. And um, I was actually looking at your manufacturing store building online, and it looked like you had a. Um, Maybe like a classroom setting. You guys do classes and stuff. Yeah, don't you? we actually do. And um, one of the things, um, it's one of the things I think that I enjoy the most about this business right now is is, you know, um, <clears throat> it, uh, people have always wanted us to open up a restaurant um, because we're all such uh, well versed cooks in the barbecue world. But I never wanted to get into that business. Um, so we're more about helping people make better food you know through our spices but also also through education and um really enjoy teaching uh, people the concepts that i've learned um over 20 plus years of um, of cooking over charcoal yeah and your website do you have like recipes and tips and tricks on there hundreds of recipes yeah they're all they're all time tested and proven so um we have a, a, a bunch of different ways you can you can filter your recipes by protein by occasion um so it's a lot of fun to explore and see um what's going on with our recipes because we've got yeah like i said hundreds of recipes a lot of them are submitted by our customers um quite a few of them are mine um but yeah it's it's, it's a treasure trove if you're looking for inspiration I have to check that out, especially with the holidays coming up. Yeah. Slide it to ham or turkey or whatever. See what I get. And um, oh, one thing I noticed on there, and I'm a veteran, so I kind of spot these. It looked like you guys had something going on with the um, Willing Warriors up out of. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what Willing Warriors is and kind yeah, of what you're doing for them? yeah. So Willing Warriors is an awesome organization. When I found out about it, I I, I knew. Uh, uh, we had been kind of looking for a charity to get behind um to be part of the community you know a a bigger part of the community and um i had met uh uh, larry luxiliox who who uh who gave me a tour of the retreat and um they are an organization it's a nonprofit that um provides a haven for are a, a place to stay and to regather for these um, um, veterans that have been in the hospital for a very long time. Um, and, you know, you know, sometimes well more than a year they've been in the hospital. Uh, they're finally getting back into society. So, so they provide this amazing opportunity like for them to spend with like four or five days at the retreat. Um, there's activities involved. They have counselors, um, on hand in case you know but just to talk to the soldiers and you know uh, uh, they're going through a lot of emotions at that point so 
Um, it's just a wonderful thing that they do, and I thought it was a great way to give back. So our spicy dizzy dust here, um, uh, that's what we decided to do is give some of our proceeds from the sale of the spicy of the spicy dizzy dust. That's the uh, one with their logo on it right here. Yeah, yeah. it's got the Warrior Retreat logo on. Um, a good things, good people, a lot of volunteers. Um, they really make it happen. They're just about to build a new house too. The house they have, they already have two houses on the property. One of them is huge. Um, this new one they're going to build is even bigger, so they'll be able to. Oh. Uh, I'll have to get Larry on the podcast to yeah. talk about the. Uh, yeah, the I think retreat their groundbreaking there. is coming up. So. Yeah, let's go check that out. Um, so spicy dizzy dust. Um, I've actually tried that one. I love it. Um, not too spicy, but just enough spicy. It's spicy. Uh, but I got to ask you, what's your favorite? There's 34 flavors. What's your favorite? Um, well, I guess that's kind of like if I could only have one. <laughs> um, I would pr I would say probably the Raging River. You have a bottle oh, yeah. right here. Yeah. Um, that's the one I opened earlier. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The Raging River um, is the first seasoning that I designed. Uh, the co-founder of the company. Um, he de he designed the, the like dizzy dust and the cow lick, so we already had our two flagship rubs, and I started to work on on the raging river, which I um, which I made specifically for salmon. Um, I really wanted to eat more salmon, and um, uh, I had had really good like salmon before, but most of the the like, seasonings that were for salmon just really didn't complement the meat like I wanted it to. So I, I started working on the raging river. And um, I ended up with, I think, the best thing that you can put on salmon in the world. I don't think they're, <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion, it's the best thing on salmon that is available. Um, but we found out it's good on everything. Oh, well. That was our competition pork rub. We used that on our pork shoulder and our ribs, and the judges loved it. So that's why I got to get that big sample pack on your website you're telling me about so I can try and experiment with. Yeah, you should treat yeah because so, there's 34 flavors and they're right. all made for different things and even though i designed something for a certain thing people are finding other ways to use it and i think that's yeah. really cool so for those listening if you don't want to just go and like buy them all they sell a sampler pack i think it's got literally every flavor in it in a little package so you can get that try them all and then you can order the the bigger ones <laughs> um, i love it. i cook a lot my wife's from the philippines and I'm from Georgia, so I dabble in some barbecue myself, <laughs> um, and we're loving it. I, I think at home I've got pineapple head. I definitely have the spicy. I've got the dizzy, raging river. We've been putting it on salmon and vegetables. We like to oh, go okay, vegetable, yeah, it's good on veggies, uh, asparagus, stir fry with that one. Red pepper, red bell peppers. And to this day, when her parents come over or when I'm cooking, the smell—I don't, I don't know what it is—but to me alone, the smell is enough. Mm. Just. It's just so fresh. Like you can't open the stuff I get at the grocery store, and it's just not the same. A this huge part of flavor is smell. I think the oh, only thing true. we taste is sour, sweet, and salty. Yeah. Um, unami. There's a, <laughs> but um, smell is a big part of it, and yeah, they gotta smell good to taste good. Oh, and one more thing I do with your dizzy dust. I I cook. Um, I chop hot dogs in the morning, and I fry those with my eggs, scrambled eggs. I sprinkle dizzy dust on the hot dogs goes great with scrambled eggs and cheddar for anybody okay. that's into the breakfast eggs first time i heard um, of hot dogs <laughs> all right so this is already making me hungry uh so meet your nova neighbors um so i'm gonna start asking this question to all of our guests here on the podcast if you had to pick it what's your favorite thing about northern virginia um, God, I've lived here for so long. Uh, well, my favorite thing is uh, is the, is a convenience of everything and uh, the number of things we have available to do: mountains, ocean, okay. water, um, and the fact that everything is really convenient. That's awesome. Well, Chris, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I think I'll uh, show you around some of these boats. Thanks for after. having me. I love to and, see. And uh, this is episode two of the On the Water podcast. And Glad I got you in here as one of our earlier premier guests. So. Me too. Good to be here. Catch you on the next one.